hi guys welcome back to my channel today's video is about freelance since a lot of you have requested for it so let's get started So this entire video is going to just give you an overview about freelance, um, of my work experiences in the past, how I did it, where I get jobs, you know, those things. Let's start with 2010 um, because that's when I graduated my degree, which is um, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. So I'm not a registered nurse because I failed the board exam and I just switched to the call center for 11 years. The first job I ever landed to was Expedia. It was in Cebu IT Park. So I was hired under agency people support as a sales rep booking flights, hotels, car rentals for three years. That's 2010 up until 2013. Then the second job I landed into was Citibank under Convergis, which is same area in Cebu IT Park. And I was um, assigned to the retail department. So I take about 80 to 100 calls an eight hour shift. And that went on for about a year because I had to go through a surgery called hemorrhoidectomy, which runs in our blood. Um, all of us went through the same thing. All of my family members went through the same thing. So I had to go through that surgery, rested for about three months and then applied to my third job, which is Telstra. Telstra is a, um, an Australian, Australian account um, and it was under teleperformance in near Ayala, Ayala Cebu Center, Ayala Cebu Center, Ayala Cebu Center, <laughs> Ayala Cebu. So yeah, I was there for three years. That's 2014 up until 2017. I was a broadband technical support, fixing internet issues and email issues. And then the last place of employment was QBE, which is the fourth one. And that stands for Queensland Insurance, Bankers and Traders Insurance, and E is Equity and Life Insurance, if, not, if I'm not mis mistaken. But it's um, composed of three large corporations in total for QBE. So they offer different types of, types of insurances. But I was assigned to the motor vehicle claim section where, you know, we fix clients' um, cars if they involve in an accident or if it was... If it was if, uh, sorry, guys, it's four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm filming this. So if they've been involved in an accident, so yeah, um, we take those calls, we call repairs, and then there's an entire process for those. But I stayed with QBE for four years. I really want to stay, them, uh, stay with that company for a long time. But then due to COVID, I had to switch to freelance. So here's the juicy part. I know most people are wanting to know about this. So I... Um, that was 2019. I know 2019 was a bad year for me, worst year for me, because I became a single mom. Um, the man, not a man, the guy, <laughs> because he's not really a man. Anyway, the guy who I've been with for almost seven years on and off um, left me without any explanation at all. Like he just left. We didn't even qu quarrel or argue. What? No fights. Nah, he just left. Well, I was um, three months pregnant, but he took care of me for three months and then just vanished after three months, So, it's, which is really crazy. But let's just not dive into that. Um, yeah, I gave birth September 2019. And then I think COVID happened during that, I think, same year. That was around December, I think. Um, and then after I get, I've given birth, I was still working in a call center. My routine was... I would go to the office around four o'clock in the morning because it takes two hours, you know, transportation um, from here to there. And um, my shift starts at six o'clock in the morning. So I would work up until two o'clock or so. And then I would go straight home. Um, and then it would take me roughly 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, that I would arrive here. And once I arrive at home, I would just take care of my daughter right away up until nighttime, up until the next day again, and so on and so forth. So if I'm in the office, my mom takes care of my daughter for eight hours roughly. And then if I'm at home, I'm taking care of my daughter like the entire full day. So you could imagine the stress that I had. Okay. <laughs> so you could imagine the stress that I had um, during those times. 
it was really hard and um especially when we were start we when we, when we blah, 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 blah. so you could imagine the stress that i was having during those times and it was it went really hard when i was working from home already so there were lockdowns during those covid times and then my employer which was qb during that time was very 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 generous enough to um put us all up in work from home type of setup and um they supplied all equipments that we need to work from home they also paid our internet as well which is really great i really love Q um, qbe out of all four employers or companies that i've had i've been to qb was the best one for me was like it is a combination of work but not really that stressful enough like it's stress in terms of like the task and the things that you have to do but it's not really that stressful like for the environment compared to the other BPO companies out there that they would definitely pressure you up. People would teach you about how to do uh, fraudulent transactions just for you to keep up with the metrics. I mean, that's that's given to other companies out there, BPO, but I'm not saying all. I said most, and but QB is not like that at all. They would... Um, ask you to do the right thing you know like never ever lie to your clients or customers whatever that is so it's really like a combination of everything that you need if you are looking for a healthier place plus good um pay it was 25 i would i think i earned 25,000 roughly a month in qbe whilst others i was earning like less than 15,000 a month <laughs> in philippine peso going back to uh, the um covid times and yeah so i was like still working in a call center while taking care of my baby full-time mom and when yeah when they asked us to work from home setting it was really hard because i had to like take care of my, my daughter i remember i do have videos and pictures that i usually you know put her in my lap while i was taking calls it was really difficult i ended up failing my metrics and then i just um left i was i really wanted to leave qbe because of the situation that i was on not because of the company and then few months passed um my daughter was already a year and two months the father of my kid communicated back um and he was like asking a favor if his great grandma great grandma could visit and see the baby because that's um the only like granddaughter um I don't know something like that so um and then during those times um his great grandma is having some health issues um was hitting around was about to turn 100 years old so he was she was having a lot of um, health issues that she feel like she doesn't have much time so she wanted to see the baby my baby and then it did push through because of covid lockdown and then his great grandma also um, passed away due to COVID, so it didn't really happen. And then after his great grandma died, he, um, you know, stayed here for ten months. And this is relevant to this um, journey because when he was here ten months, he was the one who advised me to try Upwork, who try to try freelance, and that's what I did. This is actually the steps in case you guys are interested to know how to start in freelance. The first thing that I did was to take the first step. What are the questions that you guys have? If any questions you have, just Google it. That's what I did. I just Googled, I just Googled Upwork and I was, I, I read those description, what Upwork is about. Um, I, I just um, Googled you, uh, freelance. I also check YouTube. So here's the thing that I've learned so far. Freelancing is not an employee. So if you wanted to be a freelancer, you're not, you're not an employee. That means to say, if you're not an employee, you don't have benefits, right? Because employees does have benefits, but you're not employee. So you don't have benefits like 13 months pay, um, medical, HMO, you know, those things, paid leaves. Yeah. If you wanted to be a freelancer, you need to know how to pay your own contributions in SSS, Bucky, Big and Phil Health and Tax because you don't have an employer you are an individual contractor as a freelancer you stand alone freelancer means that you are an individual contractor um that you work for many companies out there but you are outsourced you're being outsourced outsourced by these companies and it's just like probably a long or short-term basis so it depends
going back to the story, my journey. Um, so yes, he was the one who um, suggested Upwork. And so I did. And then um, he left. That was just, um, I think, October 2021, because I was so fed up with him. Like, he was so addicted to Mobile Legends that he couldn't even take care of a baby, of our baby. And I was working almost 20 hours a day. And he's like being a pain in the ass. And he he was even jobless during those times because I asked him not to not to get jobs, you know, just focus on the baby. But he was focusing more on the on the game. So I kicked him out. And then that was the last time I ever saw him or saw him or um, that was the last thing that I ever heard anything from him ever since October 2021. So I haven't received any financial support at all like ever since even those times that i was three months pregnant until he came back a year and two months later not a year two months i think that was because that was okay let me go let me go back go back go back so he left three months i was three months pregnant i gave birth september right so that there's actually like six months that he was not there right and then he came back when our daughter was a year and two months so that's a year and two months plus six months would be a year and eight months. So for a year and eight, eight months, he wasn't, um, he didn't provide any financial support. And then until he came back, he had a hundred thousand savings. So he used them all up to buy whatever the baby needs. That was the only thing that he contributed a hundred thousand pesos, which is you all know it's not really not not enough, right? I mean, I've I've spent more than that. <laughs> honestly because my daughter is already four years old so anyway so since he left october 2021 up until today it's um already almost 2024 nah no communication no financial support whatsoever none so that's just the entire thing about my single mom thing story and um about my journey in upwork and freelance yeah when he left everything all the blessings actually came like i started to earn six digits um june 2021 2020 2021 june 2021 <laughs> i can't really say 2021 okay so i started earning six digits uh june 2021 because i had the, a full contract uh worth 15 dollars an hour so that's 116,000 philippine pesos a month which is really great and I was able, I was able to pay my debt. I I used to had a debt of two hundred fifty thousand back in the day, um, that I got scammed by Organico. Yeah, I got scammed. Not just love scam, but also money scam. <laughs> yeah, that's why you really cannot blame me if I have trust issues nowadays. <laughs> like honestly. Anyway, so yeah. Um, I was able to pay that off. I became debt free, and then I started. I started to get life insurances, medical, um, for my kid and me and my my mom who is a senior citizen. And I was. Um, I started to pay everything here in our apartment: rent, utilities, like all the bills, expenses. I'm paying all of it, and um, I became a top rated plus. That was. October of 2021 was it October yeah it was October same month as to when I kicked my ex out from the house <laughs> I think that it was just like two weeks later that I, be I became a top rated plus which is really awesome like all the blessings poured out when he left so I think he was like the unlucky charm <laughs> that I had that's what that's how it all started my journey and um i think i'm gonna end it like that i don't know but let me just give you guys an idea like you know comparison thing between freelance and call center or corporate jobs so in the corporate jobs like if in terms of application you just have to go to the, the company right go to the office go to the business to the company whatever submit your resume cv whatever oops and then you just have to pass the interview and the exams and you're done. So the only requirements in a call center, because it is a call center, you just have to take care of the call. Any queries, questions of your customers, you just have to take care within the call. And that's really it. So English is important. As at least you can converse well in English. It may be you're not fluent, you're, you, don't, you have an accent, whatever. 
So yeah, as long as you convert, you can converse in English really well. And number two is you can pass any of the exams because those exams reflect to the accounts that you are best fit with. That is for the call center guys. Let's go to freelance. Freelance is like this. We don't have companies here. We don't have companies that you can apply for and it's not bulk hiring just like the call center because we don't have attrition here. Um, so most of the job posts out there in the freelance is just small startup business. There are big businesses out there, but um, it's a combination of a lot of you know different kinds of businesses all around the globe. And then those job posts are being posted by clients who needed help. Um, and couldn't afford to hire an employee so they go with a freelancer which is a lot more cheaper because they don't have to provide any benefits right for that specific person especially if it's just a short short gig like they just want you, they ju they just want you to um, take care of the backlogs or they just want you to make a powerpoint presentation for them or whatever it is it's not every day you need to make a powerpoint presentation right it's not like every single day that's really weird but anyway um so that's freelance it's really like a combination of a lot of things any person can be a client if you have money you can be a client if you want to hire anyone and you want to do anything you can you can hire someone to do that for you there was even one job i saw that he was looking for a human alarm clock that would just wake him up whatever day and time it is and that was it jobs here are really crazy they're even like serious jobs you know like you know business side but then there there are jobs that are like crazier like i even was hired before to make daily conversations in english yeah daily conversations in english you just talk to this client in english every single day whatever it is you're gonna talk about under the sun anything in freelance in terms of application there's no companies that we can refer you it, there's no such thing as like that we don't even have referral bonus if ever we refer you to someone and then it's not common it's not common for the referral thing okay um, we don't have companies we do have platforms platforms not social media platforms but freelancing platforms you just go to google type freelancing platforms it will give you the list of freelancing platforms that you can apply you can sign up and you can apply for jobs so in case you already have created an account in that platform you just explore how it works and then apply and that's it you just wait for the client to respond back to you if they're interested to hire you if they want to interview you then go for the interview and be there answer questions whatever it is it depends on the client if they really like you they will hire you for the job and when they do they give you access to all the, t the tools softwares applications that you will use to perform your role and then that's pretty much it so the next step is to wait for the client's advice um most of the time they will ask what time and date are you available tomorrow next week whatever date it is um so that you can guys have the training it's not really a training to do your job but it's like a training more so discussing about their business and what they expect from you to do from you or for for those tasks that you to do and those this and that so just like relaying everything else before the contract starts before they before the client leaves you alone and do your work alone because pretty much we are alone here you know do you see anyone else here in in this video it's just me right so if you're a freelancer you should be independent you should be resourceful you should be a go-getter you should be a problem solver because any situation um, any kind of situation you're in any issues you might have may be in a call in an email whatever you have to fix it alone I mean, don't get me wrong. In the first two weeks, that's the learning curve, right? There's going to be a learning curve, curve for everyone. So that's okay. You still have a support from your client or from the team or for the, from the company. So you, you can ask you know, questions that you have. But then you're expected that you're only... Um, you, you're expected to learn from it through time. Like, don't keep asking the same questions all over again. That's the difficult part when you are switching from call center to freelance because in call center where we're used to spoon feeding we're used to like having that full support from our trainers managers mentors um supervisors whoever we have our colleagues that um we can ask around questions 
and then we can still do the right things, you know? Um, but here in freelance, you don't have anyone else but yourself. And if you need help and the, the person that you communicated to is not available or whatever, or is probably busy, then you have to really, you need to really be um, resourceful and, you know, um, a problem solver. Like, for example, there was a case that um, this customer was very frustrated and all. I called him up and then he told me he was looking for a link that I don't know where to get to get the link. So what I did, I just um, researched and checked every tool that I have access to. And it took me a long time to get that link. <laughs> but at least I was able to get it. So if clients are irritated by you because you keep on asking the same questions all over again, they will probably replace you. You know, guys, we are really easily replaceable here in freelancing world. Like clients can just change you in just one snap. I mean, imagine in one job post, how many people are vying for that job role? There's 50 plus. And you don't know how 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 many there really are if it's 50 plus because that's a very broad thing, right? It doesn't give you a specific number. 50 plus could be a, a thousand, right? 50 plus could be a hundred people. So if you're not able to satisfy the client or make them happy with your with the quality of your work, they're really not going to keep you for a long time. And that's why jobs here in freelance are very unstable. There's a lot of things that could affect your contract, like number one, um, the business. So if they're not doing well, they're not earning or they're not making profits really well, they're not going to keep you. Of course, why would they ever keep you if they're not not earning, right? So they're going to cut expenses and including you. They're going to they're going to cut you off. Other times is is that you're not doing anything wrong, but then they were able to find another person that's much cheaper than you and that is much better than you. So they can just let you go. There are other times as well that you made a lot of mistakes and they're just fed up with it and they just replace you or even if you made just one tiny mistake and they don't like that so they're just gonna let you go so do not ever believe whenever the client would say this is a long-term you know job that we're offering don't ever believe that because in the corporate job or call center call center even if you were absent for a lot a lot of days and then you were you know you're not doing your job really well blah 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 you have to go through a lot of warnings, right? You have verbal warning, you have written warning, you have final warning, you go through HR as well. So it's not like one snap, you're going to be terminated. No, but in freelance, it is really common here, like very, 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 very common. Like um, freelancers even would post in group pages and they would cry because they lost a client due to their mistakes and whatever. So for me, just to end this video up and let me know if you have any comments down below so that I can make another video. I will make series of freelance you know, videos if you want. But for me, in order for you to get hired, number one is um, make sure you understood the job post because in each job post, guys, it is very specific to what the client needs. And no one else knows more than the client. So I, I don't believe such thing as, oh, there's a winning proposal, you know, everyone's winning jobs because of this, of this proposal, or I do have an online course, you know, people are getting jobs because of this. No, I don't believe those things. Like, it's great to have those. I'm not saying that's completely useless. I'm not saying getting certificates are useless, or getting a badge in Upwork is useless, or getting a 100% JSS course useless. Those things will definitely level you up a little bit compared to the others who don't have those things. But then, it doesn't guarantee anything. It doesn't guarantee that you always get hired. You always get in invitation if you are a top rated plus, if you're a, if you're a top rated, if you have 100% GSS or whatever it is. It doesn't guarantee anything. Um, what for me, what guarantees is number one: if you keep on upskilling, if you add more skills as you go further, then you will definitely have jobs off job offers, or you definitely will win jobs because you know a lot, right? You know a lot of things. You have a lot of things to offer to the table. Out of 50 plus who applied, you are the most skilled and most like the best one, the best fit amongst the uh, other 
people who applied as well so you definitely will win the job skill sets are very very important here it's um labanan ng skill sets dito in tagalog so um in each job post right there are qualifications requirements that they indicated there and out of 50 what if 10 plus are qualified and they only need one to hire so what's good was it was it going to be what's the deal breaker so you have to think you have to think on the client's end if you're the client you're looking for a sales rep and there's 10 people who pass those things was it what is it going to be like how do you how do you um go down to just one picking just one so it's all about skills right what if that specific person has a lot of skills and you might use those skills and knowledge in the future when you launch your app or whatever it is, whatever it is that you're planning in your business or company so that's when you would say okay i'll pick you know candidate number one because i like that blah 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 so it's all about beneficial what are the things that clients can benefit from you as a freelancer what is it what is it for them if they hire you they pick you above the rest of the of, of the 50 plus who applied as well and mind you guys jobs here in freelance is available worldwide okay it's different because in a call center in a call center company it is available only to the people who as who is living there in that area and in that spe specific state country whatever so you have less competition right but here in freelance it's available online worldwide so you're in competition with first world countries second world countries third world countries and if you talk about first world countries like america they're very very independent at the age of 18 years old so who knows probably they started freelancing at the age of 18 years old and compared to you you just started like how old 20 30 plus if they started 18 years old and they're they're already like you know upskilling and everything like that so yeah they're way ahead than us right so it's gonna be hard it's gonna be hard it's really hard getting your first job will be the hardest but then keeping a job post will be the most hardest of all right you heard that right keeping the job is the most hardest because it's hard to satisfy the client it's hard to please them it's hard it's hard to make them happy with your output output with your job whatever it is and in order for you to make them happy and satisfied you just have to think outside the box what are the things that you need to do um there's going to be like tasks that they will give you at first they will give you like less tasks for the first two weeks and then they will give you more as time progresses the more comfortable the client is with you um the more comfortable they are okay with delegating tasks towards you so especially if you're into virtual assistant roles oh my gosh there's a lot of things that I can share about virtual assistant, but let me know in the comment section. I'll make one uh, because currently it's six o'clock. <laughs> I've been filming this for two hours, guys, but um, I'm just going to end this uh, video right here just to give you an overview about it. Um, that's just how difficult how we get jobs here in freelance. If you see a freelancer is earning six digits a month, it's not really a month. It depends on the contract. If it's fixed amount, then that's really guaranteed six digits a month. But then if it's hourly rate, it's not really guaranteed six digits a month. It depends on the workload. Um, it depends on the tasks that they're given on a daily basis because there are days that you don't have anything to do, so you don't have money or income. Like I said, if you're a free freelancer, you don't have benefits, right? If you go to the office as a call center agent, even if you're not doing anything, you spend the entire day in the clinic because you're not feeling well, you're still paid because you do have a benefit like paid leaves, right? Sick leaves. But in freelance, guys, you don't have those things. So if you get sick, you can't work, no pay. No work, no pay. If there's no work to do, if the client doesn't have any tasks for you to do, then there's no pay for you for that specific day. That's just how it is. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to tackle about virtual assistant in the next video. Just let me know any questions you have so that I can just tackle them in one video. Anything that I missed, please comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye.